schließt es an. Mhm. I just can't think of anything to say. Well, the last time I felt this way, my father died. Where you keep looking for the escape. There must be an escape here somewhere. I must be overlooking something. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like a death in the family of man. Yeah. The question is, what do we say to each other today? To the people that we love, what do we say to the people that... I'm sorry. Turn off the television. Yeah. I'm sorry. The television is what's gotten us here. I'm sorry I didn't do more. Mm -hmm. We have to look to history, right? What does history tell us about this stuff? Well, history says don't give up. Yeah. History says uh, there's another day. You know, last year, almost exactly a year ago right now, we had an experience right here, right down the street from where we're sitting right now in Paris. And the takeaway that I think we both had was a very personal one in confronting the possibility of death head on in the midst of a terror attack. Mm -hmm. And we both agreed that the only real reaction, the best reaction, the best thing that we could do was continue to spread positivity, mm -hmm. to play music, to come together in groups, in small communities. How does this compare to that? Instead of being fearful for the deaths of individuals, it's the sense of the death of our humanity. Something much larger has been attacked and lost. But, you know, having heard you say that, I, I felt good for a second <laughs> when you said that. That the only response is to meet in small groups and play music and spread positivity and change the things you can, accept the things you can't, and try to call the spirit down. Try to be in a room when the spirit's there. What else can we do to heal ourselves? So that that's my question, I guess. Is So how do you feel right now? It's 11 in the morning. Yeah, about we, walking on stage nine hours from now. When you walk on stage, you are a, a version of yourself. You're ideally the best version of yourself. That version that can be a kind of uh, lightning rod for the best in all of our potential. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. <laughs> I've been thinking about how to s spread strength through music for a long time, and so maybe I have some moves some things that I can do. Maybe I have some songs, some lyrics that could be helpful uh, for today. Maybe the answer is there is only today and that we have to do it one day at a time. When I woke up this morning and I looked at the news, I, I felt totally defeated. I felt totally deflated. And yet I'm also already starting to feel that this is an opportunity for me and for all of us to work on ourselves and to do more for the people around us. Yeah, it, it sort of comes to that. With It's funny you said that. When I woke up this morning, the first thing I did is I wrote an email to you and it said, I'm sorry. And I didn't send it because I didn't know how to explain why I wanted to say to you, I'm sorry. I mean, do, don't you think it's I'm sorry that you, that this has to be the world that, that you live in? Yeah, I'm sorry that this has to be the world that you live in, and I'm sorry that I told you it was going to be okay, and, yes. I, and I didn't prepare you better. We have to find a way to say this to our children, and, and that's why I think today is the day we learn to explain certain things to our children, and it, that means that it's the day that we learn to explain certain things to ourselves, because it doesn't have any parallel in our history. It's like Hitler being elected. As we've been saying it for a few days, don't forget, Hitler was elected. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have some very, very difficult times ahead of us, and the most difficult is to try to get our, our spirit back, our positivity back. Yeah, man, this is like a very dark existential moment. Yeah. And existential in the sense that 
the absurdity, of the, the, the lack of meaning in our lives is, is just shoved in our face by this. Like, you think your life has meaning? You think that there's meaning in what we're doing out here? No, there's no meaning. It's absurd. It's chaos. Now what do you do? And, of course, we know the answer was you choose to be happy. I guess what's troubling to me right now is that is it immoral in some cases to choose to be happy? What do you mean? Well, I've never felt like that. I've always felt that uh, we're here on this planet, on the one hand is life, the other hand is death. Choose life. Choose to be happy that we're here, that this is okay. Have we blown this up too large? Are there going to be checks and balances to stop this idiot? Are there going to be ways to marginalize him? Are these people who have brought the circus to town and taken our money and, and about to leave town with everything we valued, are, are they in the end their own limit on power? Is the lack of their own imaginations enough to circumscribe the evil they can do? Is there any precedent for that? Does that seem to be the case? Does it still work to choose to be happy? We come again then to what it is that we do. This is what we do. I mean, you just made a record, Ben, and it's called Picture Him Happy. Picture Him Happy. And it refers to Sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill, and every time it rolls back down the hill... He pushes it back up the hill, and it is our task, says Albert Camus, to picture him happy while he's doing it. The song that I woke up hearing was, I May Be Wrong. I may be wrong, but it seems to me... The past ain't what it was, and the future ain't what it used to be. Everywhere I go, I hear people say, man, you should have been here yesterday. Yeah. That's the song that I keep hearing. The idea that uh, it's transitional... It's chaotic. If, if we turn to deep science, we find solace. Deep mm -hmm. science says, look, the only reason you're here anyway is to pass on your DNA. All this other stuff you're worrying about, justice, fairness, right? That's not in the world. That's in your mind. That's, those are human things. There's no justice out in the animal world. Uh, uh, an animal is hungry, it kills another animal. A bear is angry at something, it, it kills it and moves on. These ideas of justice, these higher so-called ideas, these only exist in the minds of, of men. And they exist in the minds of men because men have the dubious advantage of being aware that they're aware. And so it gives them some sense of responsibility to uh, think higher thoughts. But sometimes they're overwhelmed by that responsibility. And they choose not to think higher thoughts. Sometimes they're brought face to face with the fact that they live in chaos and they cannot master the chaos. So what can we do about this? You have always said your message, the message that you spread, the, the, the message that your career is based on, the message that you taught me is it's all right to feel good. In spite of conditions. In spite of conditions. This is what you love. Johnny Griffin said this to you. Jazz is music that was made by and for people in spite of conditions. And you carry that like a talisman with you. Yes. Is it all right to feel good? To yes. Today. Uh, every day. Every day. And I believe that all <laughs> we've got is humor to get us through it. How do you talk truth to power? Through humor. Or in our case, through swing, I guess, mm -hmm. through the feeling of rhythm. Maybe in our case, rhythm circumvents fear. Or maybe in our case, rhythm, when it contacts the beat of the heart, connects us to something that is primitive and maybe even infantile. Something that calms fear in the limbic system like a mother rocking a baby. Mm -hmm. hmm. When the mother says, it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right. Again, when I woke up this morning, I wanted to say to you, I'm sorry. And then I wanted to say to you, it's going to be all right. This is what I, I want to say to my daughter too. And Is it all right to say that to your child when you don't know if it's going to be all right? What did they say to the children in the Holocaust? I mean, they must have said it's going to be all right. They must have said it's going to be all right. You have to say that. 
and a part of you has to believe it's true. Well, here we are. It's only life. All we can do is be good to one another. All we can do is love one another and tell one another, you're doing a great job. Yeah. You're doing a great job. I'm here with you. You're here with me. Um, I'm here for you. This too shall pass. This one is brutal. Leo, this one is brutal. I never, never, never thought we'd have to feel this. It is a lot like Vietnam, though, in in the sense the underlying dread and angst that we felt. And, you know, when people romanticize the 60s as this hippie period and it must have been this, it must have been that, there was a lot of this feeling in the 60s. Yes. This chaos, this arbitrary dread. And we turned to music. And culture. And culture. We turned to music and culture. The problem that we have that we keep confronting is that back then there was such a thing as dissent. Now we're confronted with the ability of the commercial system to absorb dissent. Absolutely. You you come at it with dissent and it takes the dissent and it turns it into fodder on 24-hour cable news. Yes, the 60s, the dissent of the 60s has been commodified and sold back to us. That's the difference. The rejection of Hillary Clinton is a kind of final brutal blow mm. to the descent of the 60s. Mm. We've got a gig tonight. We have a few hours to get ourselves We have a few right. hours to get up on that stage and tell people it's all right to feel good. And uh, I guess that's what we have to tell them. God damn it.